This is Ellie Live from Los Angeles, welcome to the Dr. Aaron Show. We're all about manifestation, transformation, and breakthroughs. It's time to claim your birthright of prosperity, vitality, and love. So grab your tea or coffee because together we're awakening the world. May you live your truth. If you're somebody who has been wondering the mysteries and the mysticism of the Bible, maybe you're somebody who's actually been repelled by the Bible, but it still begins to creep into your consciousness wondering what prophecies and what teachings are actually really in there. Or if you're somebody who's been steeped in traditional uh, teachings of the Bible and you're ready to expand your consciousness around it, you're ready to understand the metaphysics of it and understand the creative process, the supernatural manifestors that we truly are, then this podcast is for you. Welcome to the Dr. Aaron Podcast. We come together to know the truth, live on spiritual principle, and align with the universal law. We truly believe that when somebody awakens, they have a gift and message to bring to the world. And together, we're awakening the world. So here we go, you guys. We're going to be doing a series on the Bible. We're going to be doing a series on not only just the Bible, but on the hidden teachings of, of different prophetic texts. So I want to just first disclose that I am a metaphysical, new thought, ancient a teachings minister. I specialize in teaching the creative process, universal law, and how to interpret the hidden teachings of the world, the Bible, prophetic texts, and how to understand how we are supernatural manifestors, how we truly are God, all collectively in the one consciousness. Our primary teaching is oneness, unity, and understanding how all creation is created from this one source and this one cause. And all of life is the effect of all of that, all the infinite creations. So we're going to dive into Genesis, how you manifested the world into existence. And this may trigger some people. You may have a hard time with it, and that's okay. I want you to know that wherever you are is exactly how you're going to interpret this, just like when you interpret the Bible. The Bible is the greatest story ever told. The Bible is a biography of you. The scriptures are the scripts of life. The scripts are about the states and experiences you will experience as God in human form. It's a codex, it's a format, it's a, it's metaphors. It's, you know, whether you believe that there was prophets that were literary geniuses, whether you believe some of it was written by Jesus or by God, it doesn't matter. And in fact, I am not a biblical historian. There are many masters that teach all that. That's not what I'm here to teach. I'm here to teach the interpretation of how the Bible is really stories of enlightenment stories for you to be able to understand how you create all the different dynamics you can create and how you can set yourself free. So let's do this thing. So if you begin to, you know, let's just take a deep breath in for a moment and just recognize that truth is truth. It doesn't matter if it's written in the Bible. It doesn't matter if it is because truth is life. You are truth. Universal law is truth. And one of the greatest ways that we learn is by story. We learn by story. We learn through all the time of all people that have lived on this planet and all the great prophets. We teach Christ consciousness, which is along with Buddhist consciousness and all the one consciousness that is the creation, which is the core of who you are. So let's just take a moment to to go to Genesis to go to in the beginning and in this dynamic of this first, the book of Genesis. And so in the beginning, when God created heaven and the earth, the earth was formless and void and dark darkness covered the face, of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good and God separated light from darkness. So let's just go into this. I'm not going to read the whole Genesis, but let's just go from a from an elementary standpoint, right? So here's God. God decides to create and breathe into and have create this thing called light. Let there be light. And in this creation of 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 all the dynamics of 
of separating the water, separating the earth from the sky, separating light from dark, from you know day from night and all this, we recognize that God also created this thing called Adam and Eve. And in the beginning, we have to recognize that it's not the beginning. In the beginning is what Genesis talks about, but there's something that happens before the beginning. And this is what we call the vast eternal plan, right? So we have to recognize and, and ask ourselves all these things. So here's Adam and Eve, they come down, God has created them from, from dust, right? And from earth and understanding that God says, you know, here's this garden of Eden with all these trees, with fruit on some of the trees, a tree of life, all these things, but you can't eat from one tree. And it's the tree of knowledge, because if, if you, when you do eat from this tree, you will die right so as a little girl i remember i was not raised religious uh, in fact the opposite my mother was quite anti-religion because my father had kind of left trying to find himself through his spirituality and through religion and so she became very kind of repelled by it so the only kind of uh like experience i had of religion was when a little when i was a little girl i had some friends that would go to church and we would go with them and so i remember the first time listening to the story as a little kid of genesis and it seemed really odd. Here it was a story of how the world's created. And there's this God, this kind of man in the sky that creates Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve are kind of like less than. And they're so lucky to be in this, you know, Garden of Eden. And even the fact that, you know, it states that Eve is basically from the rib of the man to basically have him not be lonely. It's like, it was, it felt so weird and wrong and bizarre and from, from all perspectives of a little girl. Um, and it said that basically, you know, then there's God that would judge and condemn. And basically there's this woman and she's the rib only here to, you know, complete the man basically to have him not be lonely. Right. And then they eat from the tree and then God condemns them, judges them again, shames them. They feel so scared. They're naked in the garden of Eden. And now, you know, then now Adam blames Eve and Eve's like, well, the serpent told me, you know, so there's all these different dynamics that are going on in you know the garden of eden with adam and eve and so we're i remember looking at all this and it made no sense and in fact as a little girl growing up in california i would laugh at the bible and most of my friends would laugh at anybody that was you know into jesus as savior and this whole story it was like it was almost like looney tune right so let's break this on down from a metaphysical standpoint this is a profound story of teaching us how we create. So first of all, again, we have to go back to Genesis. Genesis is, stands for in the beginning, but it's not the beginning. Whenever you have a beginning, right, you've got to have a plan first in creation. You have to have a vision. You have to, have to desire something. You have to actually hold it in consciousness, right? So in order for God to create, we want to take a look at all the different perspectives of, of the creation right so you yourself there's something within you that is the witnessing so as you read this story you can take on all perspectives you can take on the perspective as being just the witnesser reading the book and having neutrality around it you can read it from being god and being able to create whatever you create and the infinite infinite creations of man and woman and and all the animals and all the seas and, and light and dark and day and night and all that and all the thing that we teach in universal law which is creating harmony or chaos creating heaven or hell creating all of it you can also read this story from being the man and the woman and from a metaphysical standpoint the man adam represents consciousness represents the the kind of pure consciousness that doesn't have any kind of kind of ability to necessarily evaluate it's just pure consciousness right it's it's pure consciousness and the woman represents the subconscious okay so i said that a little bit bizarre but adam actually represents kind of a pure consciousness without having trauma without having all the kind of limited beliefs already okay he just gets to create from nothingness which is our pure like will which is our pure 
choice, right? The women in the biblical stories represent the subconscious mind, represent that part of us that is that has the epigenetics, that has that all of the different things that have gone into it. And the serpent represents that that part of us that is in the lineage of the spine. That's why you'll see the snake on a lot of the health stops. So the snake represents can also bring you to it can bring you to total health. It can also bring you to disease. Right? The serpent is that part of ourselves that understands and represents the epigenetics of our oneness, our memory, eternal life, and 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 death also all in one thing. Right? So there's the tree of life, which is understanding it all comes from one source. The tree of judgment which is the judgment of good or bad and so god says to adam and eve the moment that you eat from the tree of wisdom you will die so what does this mean exactly this means that the moment we judge through wisdom because the only way you can have wisdom is understanding you know good or bad and and all the different perspectives that's wisdom right so the moment that you actually eat from the tree of life you will die And that means that as we are in our mortality, as we think we're better than, less than, good, bad, all that, we will experience being the effect. We will experience dying in human form. And that's why we state that the truth will set you free. Because the moment you move out of judgment and separation, because that's really what judgment is, the tree of knowledge is is judging and separating and divisioning everything. It's the opposite of divinity. So the truth will set you free because the moment that you move past judgment, the moment you no longer need the wisdom of the relative wisdom is where you recognize your oneness and where you come into the eternal life. So we have to understand that to experience more and more of our godliness, we have to experience the relative, you know, self exponential and fractals of the experience. And this is what this is about. This is about how we create. This is your biography. This is how you can actually, as the God that you are, create divisions within yourself that you actually can shame, you can judge, you can cast down, you can do all these things as the creator. You are the creator and there is a plan. And the plan is to experience more of thyself. And so you have to understand that if God is almighty, all knowing, all omnipotent, how does God experience more of thyself? The only way is to experience in a 3D form, in a relative world, fractals of thyself, inverted fractals. So in universal law, we understand that there is a creation factor. We call it the part, part, part that comes from the top down. And it is it creates in heaven and hell. It creates in harmony and it creates in chaos. It creates heaven, it creates hell. And this is the story to understand the genesis, how we're creating, how all of it we're creating, right? And so some of the lessons are moral. Some of them are that if you go into that realm of the inversion and into human head, right? You will have pain. You will have struggle. God said, you know, you will have, a, you know, you know, you will birth and pain. You're, you will have to do uh, terrible things, basically. It's, it's really, it feels icky. The story feels icky, but this is life. You know, as a child, you can go in the jungle gym and you can either swing on the swing, but you can also fall and scrape your knee, right? This is life. This is the creation factor, but we have to dif- differentiate being a creator versus creation. And this is what this story tells. God's desire created the vision and the desire always is love and to experience more and create. God wants to experience more of thyself because it's omnipotent. It is all that. The oneness is expanding our experience of creation. The universe, we even know this scientifically, that the universe is expanding at all points in time, right? So we have to understand that all of these people in the Bible and Adam and Eve, they're just cast of characters. They're the parts of ourself that are all the different aspects. We can be the victim. We can be the shamer. We can be, you know, um, manipulated by the snake. We can be, you know, all these different aspects of thyself. That's all it is. The book of Genesis opens in the Hebrew Bible with the story of creation. God, a spirit hovering over an empty, waterless void, creates the world by speaking into the darkness and calling into the light, sky, land, vegetation, and living creatures all over the course of six days. Each day. God pauses to pronounce 
it's good. It's all good. On the sixth day, God reclaims the intention to make being his own image. You are the image because you are God. It may be an image because it is feels like it's division. It feels like it's separate. Then it feels like you're not at the creation. But the truth is, when you take the book and you place it away from yourself and you just witness it as the witness that you are, you begin to understand a bigger picture that never is told because like anything that is divinely written, you can read it over and over. And where your consciousness is, is how you read it. And so are we ever really cast from the Garden of Eden? We can have the experience that we are, right? And the garden Eve encounters a crafty serpent who convinces her to eat the tree of the forbidden fruit. Forbidden fruit. And this is my question, right? Why would it be there? Why would this tasty fruit of figs be there if it weren't to have? We're here to experience life. And we understand that the deeper, darker, more hell you go to, the more you can experience heaven. We see this all the time. We see people that have been through terrible trauma, that have had even addiction or anything, you name it, the darkest of the dark. When those people prevail, they become our masters. They become the teachers. They become the prophetic speakers of this land, right? Like think about the most prophetic teachers that we've had on this planet and the hell that they've been through. I mean, it is profound if you think it's perfect, a perfect relative experience. And this story tells us how Genesis, how we create in the beginning, understanding every last drop of this. And so I know it might feel creepy that a woman has, is a rib. A woman here is keep a man company. God is cruel and condemns. Women disobey, disobey and can be manipulated by snakes, right? Shame, remorse, all that. But the truth is that it's all here for your enlightenment, that every last drop of it was created from creation. This is explaining in the beginning, this is explaining law. This entire, the Genesis is, is explaining universal law and how you can actually create exponentially in the insanity and the division and the shame and the guilt and the judgment and all that. And I know that if you're somebody that's never it's been repelled from the Bible, that I invite you, like all of us, to open up our mind, to not judge a book by its cover, to not judge a person by their color, by their differences. May we begin to open our mind. May we begin to see how all of life is a divine prophetic experience, this masterclass. All of life is a lesson. Every relationship is a prophetic relationship. If you can't see God in all, you can't see God at all, as I say. When you look in the mirror, there's God as well. And so on this, I just say thank you, thank you, thank you. I am so excited to dive more into this, more into Emerald Tablets, Hermetic teachings, more biblical stuff, all the world religions, all that, but coming from a perspective of manifestation, coming from a perspective that God is not outside of the self, coming from a perspective that we understand that, that, that we chose this. You chose this. And as we go into, you know, becoming teachers, because a lot of the people that listen to this show are having to call in to turn their spirituality into careers, right? And we have to know that we chose this. It's not the easiest path sometimes, but what I know is that the more we dive into this work, the more we will be able to understand, the more we'll be able to stay in a new neutral place and understand where other people's consciousness is and not make them wrong for not knowing that they're God yet. It's okay. They don't need to know that. They can have a relative experience. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not our place. Our place is to stay neutral and trust that universal law works with perfection. Whatever you do comes back exponentially at you, right? So I just know that right now, the beginning is right now again, and every breath is the beginning. But first, you have to have a plan. And so my plan is to know the truth of our oneness, of our unity, that all life is working for me and not against me. 
I know right here, right now, the plan is love and to experience deeper and deeper aspects of love and creation and expression. And so I just say thank you, thank you, thank you. Please like, share, and comment if you um, have gotten value from this. You can also, if you have had a divine calling to do your inner work, you can come in. We actually have a program that is not for people that want to turn it into a career also. Spiritual warrior, you do all your internal work, um, breakthrough work, E4 trauma cell processing work, and have an extraordinary community and have uh, virtual retreats. But if you do want to make your spiritual calling into a career, we have a bunch of different processes. You can learn E4 trauma method. You can become a master spiritual psychology coach. You can also become a practitioner and a minister, a metaphysical minister and a doctor of divinity. So have a beautiful day, you guys, and know that the Bible is your biography. Just like all of life, it is all reflecting back for you to experience more and more of the depths of your soul. Have a beautiful day and may you live the truth. Thank you for tuning into the Dr. Aaron podcast. If you've had a spiritual calling or desire to get certified as a spiritual coach or a world-renowned spiritual leader, go to newthoughtglobal.com. If you've received value from this show, I would love it if you share it with a friend and give it a five-star review. Also, we have spiritual practitioners that are trained to deliver the E4 trauma method and assist you in birthing your truth. So let's be friends on social media. Again, my handle is drerin.tv across all social media. Have a beautiful day and may you live your truth.